to everyone joining us today at Z Church. We're happy you've chosen to worship with us. Whether you're on the Zoom platform or watching on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, we would love for you to leave a comment and give us feedback on the service. We really do want to hear from you. We will be having communion today. Please prepare, please prepare your communion elements, bread or cracker and juice, so they're ready. We will have the opportunity to honor God with our tithes and offerings during the service. Please mute your microphone during the service if you're on the Zoom platform. Stay tuned for the afterglow immediately following the service. Please join us for this special time of fellowship. Javier. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for your Holy Spirit, for your Holy Ghost that you sent upon us. Uh, let it inspire us with your word. So your word is spoken, your rema, what you want uh, you for us to hear, through, especially through our dear uh, Pastor Loretta and anybody else who uh, gives some words, some instruction, some knowledge, some love through your word. Thank you very much. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now Ana Maria will lead the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. We, now we have, have received not the spirit of the world, but the Holy Spirit, who is from God, so that we may know and understand the wonderful things really given to us by God. Now, Joseph, lead us in worship. Thank you, Anna Maria. This song right here is called God's Got a Blessing. Hallelujah. He's got a blessing for you. Let's go. Come on. It makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test. It won't last always. So get ready. For your, blessing. for your blessing, get ready, get ready. For, your for your miracle, get ready, get ready. For, your blessing. for your blessing, get ready, get ready. For, your for your miracle, I know you've been hurting deep down inside, let me encourage you, it's gonna be alright. Troubles and trials come to make you strong. Keep on believing, you keep holding on. Get ready, get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. Of you know that the blessings of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord. Let's go. God's got a blessing. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. God's got a blessing. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. God's got a blessing. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. God's got a blessing. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Because God's got a blessing. 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 God's got a blessing with your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. 
God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With your name on it. 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 Now come on, y'all. That was so nice. We gotta do that twice. Let's go, let's go. Here we go. Go on, y'all. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. The blessings of the Lord makes one rich. Hallelujah. God's got a blessing. And he adds no sorrow with it. Come on. God's got a blessing. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God's got a blessing. Blessed is the man and woman who trusts in him. Come on. God's got a blessing. 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 God's got a blessing with your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With my name on it. With my name on it. With my name on it. Have a wonderful Saturday, y'all. Beautiful service. Take it away, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Joseph. Praise God. That was beautiful. Hallelujah. Well, I'm here to introduce our pastors, and I just want to say, how many of you sang when you were little, deep and wide? Today, you will understand that more. <laughs> more. Hallelujah. And I just thank God for our pastors that even though we're miles apart, they love us. They know us by the spirit. You know, this ministry is not all about them. They give us opportunities to serve and what a fulfillment of that purpose it is. And I thank God for it. They equip us to do the work of the ministry. And I just give a warm welcome and give a warm welcome with me to our pastors, Larry and Loretta Huggins. Amen. 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 Well, Pastor Larry, do you want to say hello and tell them where you are on planet Earth? Uh, I will. Hello, everybody. I'm in Madrid, Spain, and Pastor Loretta is in Barcelona. She gave me a, uh, some time off so I could just have some R&R. &R. I'm having fun, but I've enjoyed the service, Pastor Loretta. It was all good. The prayers, the prophecies, so oh my everything goodness. that happened, the scripture reading, the song that Joseph sang, and now I'm excited yes. about hearing what going to preach today. Praise God. Well, uh, why, you know, I know everyone's prayed a great prayer by Javier and great scripture reading. And uh, as Pat, you've already said, everyone is just, it's been wonderful, the free prayer. And again, to Terry, thank you so very much for just leading the prayer and uh, just all of the different Z team or Z church family. You all are so wonderful. You just let God use you. And that's what it's all about. The body ministering to itself and then being strong enough to minister to the world. Pastor, before I get started, would you kindly uh, just pray over us? I will. And um, I want to say this, Pastor Loretta, we are blessed to have such an anointed team with us. We truly are. Father, we thank you for today's service. We acknowledge you and everything, and we ask you to direct your steps. Bless all we put our hand to. And today we're putting our hand to the plow. We're sharing the word of God, sowing the good seed of your word into the hearts and minds of people who are listening to us on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch and on the Z Church platform. And we pray that that seed will take root and begin to grow and to begin to press to uh, produce fruit. And you said your will is for us to have much fruit and our fruit to, to remain. And I thank you for that. Now, bless my wife. Yes. And just let the anointing of God come on her right now so that she can share what you've given to her with boldness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And I received that. Thank you, Pastor. I'm going to start my timer here. 
And uh, because I don't know how to start the one that pastor usually has, praise God for his goodness. God has a blessing for you. God gave a a word through Christine uh, today, and I just thank God for that. And also, I was just blessed by the, uh, what is it, give him glory. I don't know if we're going to see that later on today, but I have to tell you, Bob, that testimony you gave on the YouTube of Give Him Glory, my, my, my. I'm not going to steal your thunder because it's powerful. But if you don't show it today, then we'll talk about it during the afterglow. I would like for those who are responsible for the scripture putting up to um, put up Isaiah 53, 1. And before I get started, I want to say welcome to everyone who's watching us on the different um, social platforms. We are just thrilled that you have joined us, whether you've joined us live or afterwards. Do you know what? There is no shelf life on the anointing of God. Praise God. Is that a yes to everyone? Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Well, the scripture reads here, praise God. The scripture reads in Isaiah 53, 1, it says, who hath believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now, I'm just going to repeat that. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now, in the Amplified Isaiah 53, 1, the Amplified reads, Who has believed, confidently trusted in, relied on, and adhered to the message of salvation? Wow. I'll read that again. In Isaiah, which is considered the messianic uh, book of prophecies, most of the uh, prophecies in Isaiah had to do with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and especially the 53rd and I believe the 54th chapter, and even the 61st, I believe it is. So at any rate, here it reads, Who hath believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now, I'm going to go slowly today. Um, Really, the anointing that's upon my life is the anointing of a teacher. So I tend to be one that can, uh, when I do go into the mode of teaching, it's one uh, precept on top of precept. So don't go a little slow today. However, I still believe that the message that I am sharing with you today is going to cause you to be so thankful that once it soaks in, you're going to be just jumping with glee all around your home. Now, you hallelujah. may be hallelujah. Well, Tim's ready. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be thinking, well, yes, of course, I believe the report of the Lord. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Maybe that's what you're saying right now. But it reads again in the Amplified, who has believed? Stop. The Amplified is one that modifies. You know, a lot of times when I'm talking to my husband and I ask him, for instance, when he comes back from Madrid and I say to him, Oh, how was the time there? He's going to say, I had a great time. And I'm going to ask him, um, use a couple of adjectives, you know, modify great, you know. Oh, it was a wonderfully great time. Well, see, that for him, he's given details. But for me, I want to know what he got up, how he ate, what he did, you know, what clothes he was going to wear, who he met on the street, where he sat. Did he have a good angle? What was the weather? All of these things. I'm really a detailed person. So here's the amplifier. Yes, you are. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Here is the amplified. Who has believed? Didn't just say great time. Who has believed confidently, not just, oh, yeah, I believe, but confidently trusted, relied on, 
and adhere to. Fashion that person, fashioned your life to the message of salvation. Now, in the Old Testament, Isaiah 53, the word salvation, um, the Hebrew word is, I think it's Yushua. Okay, that's my Hebrew for the day. But it means deliverance. And this, I'm building a case. I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures. But I'm only giving you one thought. And the thought is in the form of the question that God asked in Isaiah 53, 1. Whose report will you believe? We have many voices all around us. And more importantly, we have intra-voices. How many times have you said, oh, my God, how, what, what was I thinking? That's a report. You're t- when yep. you say, oh, I can't believe I did this. That's a report. Amen. So the word salvation in this reads or means deliverance. Aid. Victory. Oh, you're going to love this. Prosperity. The word <laughs> salvation means prosperity. Health welfare and well-being that's in the old testament let's go to the new testament in the new testament the same word is well it's in the greek word but it means not just having the messiah save you from the burning depths of hell but it also means that in this life in this right now, I don't want to call it the nasty, nasty, because, you know, you can have what you say. So I'm going to just say right here in the now and now. I am rescued because. Who has believed the report to whom is the arm of the Lord of this salvation revealed? God said that eyes have not seen nor ears heard, but God has revealed unto them who will seek his face, the good things that he has for them in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Tim. Praise God. It says here that this word in the New Testament means to be rescued. Are you needing to be rescued from something? Crazy neighbor, whatever it is, your, your boss? Hallelujah. Whatever the thing may be. Are you needing to be rescued today? Because the Bible says, if you believe, are you believing the report of the Lord? Amen. Yeah. Good preaching. Thank you, Pastor. It not only means to be rescued. But it means to be in safety, physically as well as morally. If there's anything in your life today that will not glorify God, then you need to believe the report of the Lord because part of the report of the Lord is to be safe physically as well as morally. Preach it, Pastor. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. It also means health. Health. Health on every level in every way. Your mental health, your emotional health, your physical health, your financial health, your family health, your social health, your health, your private health, your community health, your neighborhood health, whatever it is that's going to give you health and well-being, who has God revealed the arm of the Lord, his salvation to? Again, he's asking you. God is asking you. And I have to tell you, I will, I'm a little bit ahead of myself, but even Jesus referenced this scripture. Who will believe the report of the Lord? Now, you may be saying right now, oh, yes, I do believe the report of the Lord. 
I'm not here to, to argue with you. I'm not here to, to, to uh, judge you. However, I will propose this to you. In your times when you're not making your confessions, but you are by yourself and no one else hears you, what are you thinking about? In your just normal conversations, are you saying, this is not when you're on your, oh, I got to make my confession. This is when you're kind of just on autopilot. What are you saying then? Because whatever you're saying then, that's the report and that's the report you believe. You may be saying, I'm blessed, I'm victorious. And then when you're just in your normal, oh my goodness, I can do nothing right. That's the report you're believing. Amen. Very good. Preach it. Praise God. God asked, whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of the Lord? Because it has to do with deliverance, perseverance, and for you to be free from molestation of the enemy, including your soul's safety. I got this out of studying the word. I didn't make this up. Salvation has to do with you having peace in your soul. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The Passion Translation says, who has truly, you see where I'm getting at? Who has truly believed our revelation? Who has truly believed what has been told them? To whom will God reveal his mighty arm? And you know the word arm in the Old Testament, especially, is, and even in the New, has a uh, symbolic a metaphor of strength, ability. Listen to this. To whom will God reveal his mighty arm? God said that person that makes a decision in Hebrews to come to God must first believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. You first have to come to God believing his report. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Tim. Amen. I'm just going to let that soak in. You don't have to pray at all. But the minute you make a decision that you're going to come to God, you're going to have to come to God believing that he is. You're going to have to come to God. I'm speaking to myself. I'm not out here preaching to you. I had to ask myself this question. Why are there issues in my life? God gave me the answer. It says in Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. So uh, I may be going too fast if I am for those who are writing oh, you're up. Doing good. Thank you, Pastor. Just let me know. Romans 1.16. It reads. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and then to the Greek. Wait a second. Wait a second. The passion reads, to whom, who has truly believed the revelation of God? What's the revelation? Ha ha. Ha ha. What's the revelation? Think about it. Get your thinking caps on. That's what my grade teacher used to tell us. To whom will God reveal his mighty arm? And it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power, the arm of God, the power of God 
unto salvation. It's the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto wholeness. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto healing. The, power, yeah. the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto prosperity. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto wholeness, rescue, made to do well, safe, secure, whatever it is that you need Amen. in your life. The gospel of Christ is the Amen. power of God, the arm of God. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I like Amen. the way the voice reads. It's still Isaiah 53, 1. As I said, I'm giving you a lot of scripture, but I only have one thought. The voice reads it this way. Indeed. I like that. Indeed. Who would ever believe it? That's how it reads. Indeed, who would ever believe it? Who would possibly accept what we've been told? Who has witnessed the awesome power and plan of the eternal in action? Wow. Who would God. ever believe it? You know, Pastor and I, we often talk about people who have a problem with grace, and we think, why? Yeah. <laughs> But that's what God is saying. Who would ever believe this amazing plan of salvation that's not just to get you out of the fiery depths of hell, but to give you heaven here on this earth? Amen. Praise God. Preach it. Hallelujah. Amen. I had to ask myself, yes, Loretta, do you believe that God, Jesus is the Christ and so forth? Do you believe God is real? Do you believe the Holy? Yes, yes, yes. Then uh, why are you saying this, Loretta? <laughs> why do you say that, Loretta? Amen. I can only talk about myself because even if I do get mad at myself, I still have to forgive myself so I can go to sleep at night. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. So, you know, so there, you go. there I go. <laughs> it reads here, who would ever believe this awesome plan, this gospel, which is the good news. Jesus even quoted this scripture. First, it was in Isaiah 61. I was right, Isaiah 61. It says, the spirit of the Lord. Isaiah 61, one reads, write your notes down. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings. That's in the Old Testament. And then Jesus, remember, Pastor talked about this, where Jesus came and he sat down and all the eyes were on him after he read a passage from Isaiah in the synagogue. And he read, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Now, this is really very interesting because the word that God, has, the uh, gospel of Christ is the power of God. This word is in the Greek dunamis. You've heard this word. This is not a new word to many. Maybe it is to some. But the word in the original Greek manuscript is dunamis. And it means specifically or specially miraculous power. But get this, you're going to love it. I tell you, once you get this and it soaks into you, your mind and you're thinking about it, you're gonna woo, jump out of your seat with glee. Amen. All right. This word, the gospel of Christ is the power of God, is dunamis. This also means by implication, it's a miracle of itself. That is good. Man. The word of God, the message of Christ, not just him speaking a miracle to you, but he is the miracle. Did you get that? Yes, amen. Say it again. I will. I'll put it this way. Instead of you... You know, instead of me, I'll talk about myself. 
I think we, I spend so much time trying to believe for a miracle, trying to believe. <laughs> that was my church of God in Christ coming out of me. Pass them on by. Instead of trying so hard to believe a miracle, why don't we believe in him who is the miracle? Praise God. God. We said, what? It says the word of God is the miracle, the miraculous power. Then let's look at this in a very interesting way because the Bible says that Jesus is the word. And I will read it and getting ahead of myself. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. Therefore, if the word of God is a miracle within itself, then it has to mean that Jesus, he himself is the miracle. Come on. What is the, 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 the miracle Amen. birth about? Amen. That's good. You know. Jesus. Thank good. you, Pastor. Amen. Whose report are you going to believe? I'm going to ask you to do something for me. When you think about this scripture, what do you think that report is? Write it down. Don't tell me. Just write it down somewhere real quick. Take 30 seconds or so. You've been thinking about it anyway. 30 seconds. When you hear this, the report of the Lord, what? is the report you believe. Are you done? Yes. Yes. <laughs> the report of the Lord is not you getting killed. Well, that was, that was met by an ex overwhelming excitement. That's the no, benefits of the report of the Lord, but it's not the report of the Lord. Amen. Being wealthy, having all your bills paid is not the report of the Lord. It's the benefits of believing the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's good. Being healed from the, your head to your toe is the benefit of believing the report of the Lord. We're trying to believe this when we just need to believe what God Here's the report of the Lord, what God said about Jesus. If you believe who Jesus is and who God said Jesus is, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are saying. You know that he, the Christ, lives inside of you. You know the Christ, the provider, is on the inside of you. You know that Christ, the healer, is on the inside of you. You know the Christ, the defender, is on the inside of you. Praise you God. know Christ the comforter is on the inside of you. I don't care what you're going through. Whose report will you believe? In other words, who are you believing in? There you go. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I keep telling myself I'm going to be calm. But this is the we revelation that God, thank you, Pastor. This is the revelation that God gave to me. Who I was wondering, I was asking, God, I'm praying, I'm believing, I'm doing this. Why am I dealing with these situations? Even Jesus, even the word says in Hebrews, it says, God has put everything under our feet. But things don't appear to be under our feet. But what we do see, we see Jesus. That's Jesus. another way of saying, whose report will you believe? Amen. Praise God. Amen. You need to have a foundation. That's so strong 
that as I'm saying about myself, that as Abraham did, because if we have the same faith that Abraham has, then had, then we are the children of God. So then if I can believe that, uh, that at a hundred years old, I can have offspring or I, my wife or I uh, would be that wife. And at 90 years plus, um, I have been barren all my life. I've never been able to have a child. And now at 90 past the a childbearing age, I couldn't even have a child when I was the child at childbearing age. Now that I'm past the childbearing age, you said to me, God, through Jesus, that you are going to fulfill, uh, fulfill my dreams. Whose report? Do you believe things don't look like I want them to look? Things don't feel like I want them to feel. Things aren't going the way I want them to go. But what I do see is Jesus, because the word of God said that in the beginning was the word. And, and I like how the, uh, that's John 1, 1 through 18. And this is important. Because it says in the beginning was the word john 1 1 you should should read all 18 verses but i'm just going to take an excerpt from this passage of scripture saint john 1 1 through 18 here's the excerpt in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning, the divine expression. I liked how the 20th century Bible reads that was published in 1898 out of Pastor Larry's library. It reads, listen to this. This is so descriptive. At the beginning, the word already was. <laughs> Amen. At the beginning, wherever that was, the word already was. At the beginning, the self-fulfilling word, the word that is the miracle in itself, already was. And I like to correct that. The word who is the miracle in himself, he has the power to perform it. Does not the scripture say, I can do all things through the strength, the power that Christ infuses in me? You could say it this way, I can do all things through the word that infuses his strength in me. Amen. At the beginning, thank you, pastor. At least I'm helping you. At the beginning, the word already was. The word was with God. And the word was God. He was with God at the beginning. It was through him that everything began. It was through Christ everything that began. And not a single thing began apart from him. The word then became man and made a home among us. Whose report? Are you going to believe? At the beginning, at the very beginning, the word, the message of Christ, this was before you ever had a problem. Let's put it really where we all can understand it. It was before any one of us was a gleam in our daddy's eye. You get uh -huh. my breath? Yeah. Amen. First, uh, St. John 1 through 18, again, this is out of Pastor Larry's uh, library. It's the way translation, and I loved how it reads. In the beginning, there existed the divine reason. Hmm. That is powerful. <laughs> In the beginning, there existed the divine reason, the answer to whatever Issues are in your life. I guess I'm the only one that's happy about this, but that's okay. Oh, this is the good. divine reason became incarnate. 
and sojourned among us for a while as the only son of God. What? I just read it. It says here in the Wade, the divine reason became incarnate and sojourned among us and became the only son as the only son of God. Whew, the answer to everything that you ever need in your life, the report of God became flesh. The report of God, the word of God, what he said about you became flesh. Whew. Good stuff. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. I've used up all my time, so I'm going to quite quickly go through here. You know, let me just see here. I don't want to miss something very important. You know, the report of God is that Jesus, God said in throughout the scripture, said that Jesus was my uh, beloved son. Even in Psalms 2, 7, it reads, and I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Now that's interesting. Because you, I just read the scriptures were said at the beginning, God, Jesus already was. And then here in Psalms 2, 7, it says, I've just given you birth. I declare to you that this is after the crucifixion. Because Jesus said in St. John 1, uh, what was it? St. John uh, 17, 5 through 26. Again, uh, just an excerpt. It says, oh, Father, glorify me with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Whew. That's that? deep. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Here he's saying, this is the day of begotten you. When did he be, when did he do this? After Jesus came out of the grave, after Jesus be, be, uh, paid for everything that we need. And he said, Father, glorify me. Give me back that glory I had before the world was. And Father, I will that they also prayed about you and me, who you have given to me to be with me wherever I am, uh, that they may behold my glory. We are justified by God. So we have the right to expect the glory of God. Christ in us. Christ in us. Our hope. Our right to expect the glory of God in every situation in our lives. I'm preaching to myself. Or teaching myself. There you Praise have it. God. He says, for you love me before the foundation of the world. And this love... I pray we will not only be with me, but in them. And Amen. they and I in them. Whose report? I'm going to have to go a little bit over, but just bear with me. Whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. Well, here's where it gets really interesting. Yes, you. I need you to, um, in your private time, Matthew 3, 16 through 17, Jesus was baptized. He came out of the water and the Holy Spirit lit on him as a dove, not a dove, but as a dove. And the lower voice came out of heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Please, excuse me. And then on the Mount of Transfiguration, again, a voice came out of heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Now here's the report of the Lord. I don't know what you wrote down, but I'm gonna give you the report of the Lord. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, is a child of God. If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, then you are a child of God. And for every child, and I'm reading out the Weymouth, which is published in 1905, but you can do the King James. It says, 
Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is a child of God for every child of God overcomes the world. If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, that's the report of the Lord. Read it. Read the entire first book of John. First, uh, first John, the entire book. It's the report of the Lord. And I will read it to prove to you that I'm not making this up. The report Amen. of the Lord is who Jesus is. It pleased the Father that the fullness of the Godhead should dwell in Christ. I'm going to take about five or ten more minutes and we'll still be underneath the hour. It pleased the Father that the fullness of the Godhead should dwell in Christ. You know, many people are talking about the names of God and the name. All of that is in Christ. Jehovah, your, your, your healer, Jehovah, your deliverer, Jehovah, your, 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 your salvation, Jehovah, your provider, Jehovah, your protector, Jehovah, your comforter. All of that is in Christ. And if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, then you are born of God. And everyone who is born of God overcomes the world has a big, this, listen to this. That's why I chose this translation. It reads, and this is the victorious principle which has overcome the world is our faith. That is our confidence in what God said about Christ. Praise the Lord. Wow. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's how you overcome the world. You believe the miracle itself, the, the, that Jesus came from heaven, left all the glory, and he's now took all of your pain, all of your disappointments, all of what you're dealing with, all of your, your mental issues, whatever it may be, took it to the cross and paid for it, and then said, now, Father, I fulfilled what you asked me to do. Now restore me to the glory I once had, but not only restore me, I'm going to bring all of them who believe in me with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This, God. I told you it was going to knock the socks right off your feet. Whew. And it says, who, and it asks the question, who but the man that believes that Jesus is the son of God is the one who overcomes the world. The spirit gives, and it continues on, the spirit gives testimony and is the spirit of truth and the water and the blood agrees. And, and it says here, listen, listen. It says, if we accept the testimony of men, how much more is the testimony of God greater? For God, listen to this. You thought I made this up, but I didn't. Preacher, sister. It reads, and it's in 1 John 5, 1 through 12. And the last says, you believe the testimony of men, but the testimony of God is greater. For God's testimony consists of things which he testified about his son. Whose report are you going to believe? Hallelujah. Jesus the healer? Then believe him. You know, I love this because it says, and I'm just going to read it from different translations, the same chapter from 1 John 5. It says, everyone that believes God Everyone that believes that Jesus is the son of God is a child of God and has the power to win against the world. See, this is what I'm trying to get to you right now. Instead of trying to, oh my God, I'm just believe the money's coming. The money's coming. Oh, I got my healing. Oh God, thank you for giving me victory over this yeah, crazy, crazy person. person. Oh, whatever, whatever. whatever. I believe <laughs> that Jesus, the Christ, the son of God lives in me. And as he is, so am I. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. God has, I, my life is hidden with Christ in God. Oh, that's good. Preaching. Did I just get a little excited? I think I did. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> I'm almost done. It says in the 20th century, 
because all that receive new life from God conquers the world. And this is the power that has conquered the world, our faith in Christ. Praise God. I know you heard people say, uh, we overcome the world by uh, our faith. And so I believe I have the car. I believe this. I, no, your faith in Christ is what's going to cause you to overcome on every level, in every way. If you believe the report of the Lord God about his son, that his, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Because the Bible says, as Jesus is, so am I. So here again is the question, whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to have that spirit of faith that I believe who Jesus is and I don't care how this looks, how that looks? I'm speaking to myself. I don't care what it smells like, what it looks like, what it feels like, what it tastes like, what it sounds like or anything else. I believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. Pastor Larry, I really believe that the Amen. Lord is giving you a word here. So please step in um, if I'm correct. Pastor Larry. I am. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the miracle of God sent to us. As we receive him, we receive the answer to every question, the solution to every problem, the hope to all despair. When we receive Jesus, we receive victory. We receive success. We receive liberty. I believe the report of the Lord. I believe that Jesus is who the Bible says he is. He's accomplished what the Bible says he's accomplished, and he has done for us what the Bible says he's done for us. Praise God. That's the report I believe. I don't believe the 10 p.m. news. I believe the word of the Lord. I don't believe what they're saying on the internet necessarily. I believe that Jesus is Lord. Praise God. So no matter what's going on in this world around us, keep your eyes on Christ because he is the miracle. And that's the report we must believe. Amen. 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 Pastor, lead everyone in of the salvation message, if you will. If, uh, as Pastor Loretta said, all who believe that Jesus is the Christ, they are the children of God. So many times, preachers and religion have put obstacles in front of people. They've made it difficult. They've told us that we have to be better, do better clean ourselves up, fix ourselves up before God can receive us. That is absolutely not so. Anyone who comes to him, he will receive them. All God wants you to do is to believe that Jesus is the Christ. That's simple. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come, Jesus is the Christ. Let's all say this together. Jesus is the Christ. Say it together. Jesus, Jesus is, is the Christ. 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 Jesus is Christ. Again, Jesus, Jesus is, is Christ. 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 One more time. Jesus is Jesus Christ. Is Jesus is Christ. Christ. Jesus Christ. That makes you a child of God right there. That makes you part of his family. That's right. Simply believing. You're not saying because you believe you're perfect. You're not saved because, you know, you have this uh, uh, special quality that, uh, that makes you worthy of being saved. You're saved because you believe that Jesus is the Christ. That's believing the report of the Lord. Praise Pastor God. Bird, Thank, go you, Pastor. Thank you so much. I don't know who I have my thing here. I don't know who is going to give the Communion, I believe that That will is... be me, Pastor. Okay, please, Maria. I'm going to be reading from John chapter 6, a few verses, and we're going to have communion on base of those. Then Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say to you, Moses gave you not that bread of heaven, 
but my Father gives you the true bread of heaven. For the bread of God is he which he came down from heaven and gives life to the world. I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never thirst. I am the bread of life. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man of this eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. We Amen. take this bread prophetically, Jesus, Praise receiving you and all that you are in yes. your name. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Then Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say to you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Mm. Whoso eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him. Amen. We receive you, Jesus, Amen. with this representation, prophetic representation of your blood and your real eternal life in your name. Your name. Someone sing the Oh the Blood, please. Oh, the blood of Jesus. 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 It washes my blood. No. Yeah. One more time, please. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Praise God. Before we go to the uh, next portion of our uh, service, I just want to open it up again to Pastor Larry and then possibly to anyone else that would have a word. Pastor, first to you. Um. I've got peace in my spirit. I don't have a specific word. I just want okay. to exhort everyone that uh, if you'll meditate on this scripture, it, it was really a, a simple a simple message, and that is believe on the report of the Lord. But here's the part that stood out to me, and that is that the message that Jesus is the Christ, that's the miracle. That's the report. Yes, Jesus okay. is the Christ. And I'm going to be thinking about that and meditating on it because I, like a lot of people, have from time to time put the emphasis on, uh, you know, what I'm confessing and what I'm contending for, what I'm believing for. And I have to, I have to remind myself that all of that is contingent upon believing that Jesus is the Christ. Thank you for a wonderful message. Let's give Thank Pastor you. Loretta uh, a Thanksgiving hand clap. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yep. Whoever, thank you, Pastor. So whoever what? is next, did I, am I missing? Is someone trying uh, to get offerings my attention? Next. Ties and offerings. Ties and offerings. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to let them go ahead, Steve, and direct who must do it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, 
Pastor Loretta for, for the wonderful message. There are just some nuggets that you could pick up in the in the message that we'll be meditating and thinking about. Today's uh, tithing verse comes from Second Chronicle verse chapter 20, verse 12. I am going to read both the New King James Version and the New uh, Living Translation. The New Living Translation is a paraphrase of the Bible. And uh, so in case you don't understand the New King James Version, uh, you can get an idea of what the what the, the word the word, what God is talking about in the word. Oh our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. The New Living Translation. Oh our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do. We're looking to you for help. Uh, this is a prayer that uh, the Israelites were making uh, after facing this insurmountable odds. And uh, let me just kind of get into it. We hear a lot about a person being a self-made man. In actuality, God made and formed us. He has been waiting for us to turn to and depend on him. You might have a preconceived notion about tithing. It is okay. Just share your thoughts with God and ask him, why are you thinking this way? Look to him or the Holy Spirit for answers. Many times I have asked God, what should I do about a particular situation? You know what? He knew my question and the answer to my question even before I asked him. Again, when it comes to tithing, you can be vulnerable and ask God about your doubts or your questions. Always, always look to him for answers. He knows that money is close to your heart. You can ask God, why do I think or feel this way about tithes and offerings? And what should I do next? God will definitely answer your question from a spiritual level. The tithing information is on zchurch.life. God bless you as you give. a few announcements for you. We invite you to visit our website, zchurch.life, L-I-F-E. If you go to the Divine Connections tab there, you can leave a prayer request. You'll find information about our various Zoe groups and how to get involved. And you can also contact us there if you're interested in finding a place of service on the Z team. We would love for you to leave a comment about the service. We would really like feedback from you. 
uh, you'll find the Z Church blog there where there's original content that will build your faith. We'll be moving into the afterglow shortly, and our host today is Christine. On Zoom, if you would like to observe only, please stop your video and mute your microphone. If you're watching on Facebook and have a question, please let our moderator know, and they'll bring your question into the discussion. But first, we have our Give Him the Glory Spotlight. It's time to give him glory. Hi, I'm Bob Peck, and I'm an elder here at Z Church, and I'm here to give God glory. I'm a landlord. That's my sole source of income. And two years ago, when the COVID uh, pandemic started, the governor issued a what they call a an eviction moratorium, meaning nobody can evict anybody for any reasons anymore. And one of my tenants decided that'd be a good opportunity to just quit paying rent. And they did for about a year. One day, a year later, early in 2021, I was going over my statements and pondering things and, and realizing that tenant really hadn't paid a dime in a full year. But like, what good would it do to think about it or pay attention to it anyway, since there was nothing I could do. But something got a hold of me and got me to get up and go pace back and forth and pray in the spirit for a while until suddenly I heard words of, of bold authority and faith coming out of my mouth, and I told Satan that he's either going to get his people out of God's property, or they're going to start paying rent. I issued Satan an eviction moratorium, or an eviction notice, <laughs> in spite of the moratorium. And about two weeks later, I got my statement from the property management company, and guess what? That tenant started paying their rent. And I thought, wow, this is a victory. Even though I'm out the $10,000 they didn't pay for the all of 2020, that was still a victory that they started to pay. And during this last year, well, they still didn't pay every month, but they paid most of the months, so at least two-thirds or so of this last year, which, again, that's a victory to me since there was nothing else I could do in the natural anyway. Well, now, just a few weeks ago, I was looking at my records again and noticed that well, now that tenant hasn't been paying so much in the latter part of the year, starting, uh, I think, kind of November, December, maybe January, too, that they missed. There are two or three months in a row here that they, they hadn't paid. And, and, you know, the nagging thought comes up in the back of the mind then that, uh, yeah, I, I am not very good at this faith stuff. I guess it didn't work for me. It works for others. I, I guess it didn't work for me. I don't, I don't have enough faith or something. Uh, thankfully, I didn't actually articulate those words. It was just the thing that comes up in the back of your mind. And uh, so I, I just put it away for a little while. I thought maybe I should do something. Maybe I should write a letter to somebody. Maybe I should try to make something happen. But something kind of just came up in my spirit and said, no, no, just, just leave it alone. Just don't touch it. And thankfully, I didn't touch it. I just put it out of my mind. Okay, Lord, I'll, I'll just leave it with you for another month. And about three days later, I was online at my bank website doing online banking, and I looked at the rental account, and I said, wait a minute, it's not supposed to be that much. And I thought, oh, well, what's wrong? Maybe the management company deposited somebody else's rental income into my account, because that's way too much. And I checked with them to confirm my suspicions that what happened is that tenant got a hold of money. I don't know if they'd been storing their money in a cookie jar or if they applied for some government program, but all of a sudden, in one shot, they paid $10,000. So, I told Satan that I'm going to start getting paid from here forward, but what God did was not only did I start getting paid in 2021, but now all of the income that I lost in 2020 got made back in one payment. And what little is missing from the last few months? Well, that's going to come in too. I'm believing God because I'm blessed, and He provides, and I give Him glory. Life. Wow. Amen. Awesome testimony. <laughs> All right. 
That was a wonderful, wonderful message today. You should all be pumped and ready to share some glorious things that God shared with you in that message. Anyone who is ready to go, just lift your hands and get ready to give God some praise and glory for that. Um, we Christine, all, yes, I would just like to say that when Pastor Loretta was talking about uh, confessing, and then when you're not confessing, you're saying things in the background that you're not thinking about. I believe her question was, are you being intentional about your words? Always. That is the biggest message that I got out of it. And I don't want to bring this to a different subject because this is not a different subject. But in February, the Lord told me that somebody in my family was going to be saved. And I put it in my mind thinking, geez, I wonder who this could be. You know, I share whenever I can. I do whatever I can to make it happen. And I realized when that day, he said March 7th, somebody would be saved. When that day came, even though I had spoken to my son-in-law and he repeated what I told him to say to become saved. This was like six months before. But on this day, he actually confessed that Jesus died. He actually confessed that Jesus was raised again. And I realized that, hey, I was even talking to him about it. I realized that, hey, it was you. You're the one that's saved now. He says, I believe it. <laughs> Praise God. So that's just just one thing, one thing I want to give God glory for today. Amen. amen. Praise God. Thank amen. you. Amen. Yeah. That's awesome. Praise God. That was <laughs> right. it was it was the one that I really didn't think would accept it. <laughs> <laughs> well, salvation so give, is the most important, you know, when yeah. you think about it as taking a soul. From the enemy, that is tremendous, yeah. and uh, it's definitely a part of of what we were talking about today. And uh, yeah. Elder Bob, that was a great testimony. <laughs> That's what I was talking about earlier. Praise God! So thank yeah. you, Elder Tim and Elder Bob. Thank you so much. I Let's didn't praise want to... God. <laughs> well, I said the thing that stepped out for me the most was. What are you saying when you're on autopilot shows what you really believe It's nice when you're in prayer and when you're in praise and worship and when you're confessing, you know, it's so easy when the presence of God and the glory is all over you, but then go to your workplace and get squished by some of the stuff going on and what comes out of your mouth, then that's what, you know, oh, okay, I guess this isn't doing as well as I thought I was, you know, and it just reveals to you a whole lot of areas you got to work on that you didn't know you had to work on them. You thought you were doing good. And then pressure comes and squishes something out of you. It's like, uh uh-oh, what now, God? What now? But yeah, just coming to the place where you realize um, it's not really about you and what you do and how much time you put in prayer and how much time you're in the word to study and how much time you spend confessing if you're not putting your confidence in Jesus. And I think that word that came forth today out of me is like, okay, that that's a reminder for me as well. You know, the debt's been paid. There's nothing you can do. You can't make yourself one inch taller or give yourself any, you know, thing that God hasn't given to you. It's all about him and trusting him. So yeah, that's watch your autopilot. (laughs) Amen. All right. Let's see some hands, right? Say Joseph, go for it. Exactly what I, what I locked in on was um, the lowest thing that you say about yourself, that's your report. And so, you know, when even, even when I'm here on, you know, singing and, you know, that's the high point, right? Yeah. This is the high point. 
Um, mm-hmm. it's anybody can be on camera and be like, praise the Lord, <laughs> <You know? laughs> but the lowest thing that you say during the week, that's, that's your real report. That's yeah. where you're, that's the, you know, the bottom of your, of the potential that that's keeping you from reaching where you need to go. Um, but that was, yeah, that was powerful. That was my, and uh, just an example, like, um, <clears throat> I, I guess I was talking to one of my old my old direct reports from my old division that I was in, and he was just talking about how bad things are going ever since like I left and everything is just going bad. And then I just you know I started kind of he started leaning in on leadership and everything, and I started kind of talking about it too. And then I thought about it, I was like, you know what? I, I, after the conversation, I was like, you know, I, I shouldn't have said some of that stuff because. I wouldn't be here right here with you guys if all that stuff didn't happen. So why do, why is there even a little bit of bitterness still? Why do I even go there? So that was just my, just really, it's one of those convicting moments, you know? Amen. All right. All right. Well, you're on muted, Bob. You might as well say something up there. I, I, I sure appreciate it. I'll let pastor Loretta know. I really relate to, to, I'm trying to believe. I'm trying to have faith. Oh, I got to make faith happen. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that's the way I've always tried to have faith and it's never worked, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but, but I've found, yeah, the biggest faith is just like, okay, God, your word says this, the six o'clock news says that, huh? Which report am I going to believe? Okay. I'll believe you, God. Wow. Now stuff starts to happen. (laughs) Yeah. I really appreciated that. You're, you're not alone if you're going through that kind of struggle of trying to muster some faith. <laughs> yeah. I like the part where you said that you evicted the devil. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was great. Absolutely. Was I, awesome. I said that to him and it wasn't my idea. I was praying in the spirit and stuff came out. So I, I believe that was the word of the Lord. And I just chose Absolutely. to believe it. Absolutely. And I, and I, and I didn't spend a lot of time afterwards, you know, trying to muster faith or every day I got to make a confession because I just don't seem to have that kind of faith, but at least I had enough faith to not go back and doubt and dig up what I said and say, oh, I guess it didn't work. (laughs) That's good. I just want to say, you know, that's very important because, you know, I too struggle with that where, oh my God, and you know, I'm going to fast 20 days. I'm uh, I'm going to read my scriptures. I'm not watching television. You know, I'm going to, I got scriptures all around the walls and stuff like that, you know, and all of this stuff. And, you know, I'm like, good Lord, I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah. And Bob, I, just... I just say, God, help me. And then it happens, you know, yeah. and that's where we have to put our faith. I think the, the important scripture is, even if it doesn't look like it, even what you're seeing doesn't look like it, but what we do see is Jesus. We yeah. don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. We yeah. b- walk by the confidence in what we see. We see Jesus. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Amen. <laughs> yes, Bob, I believe that was a word from God because there's scriptures in the Bible that you can actually get a restraining order for the devil. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I, I will, I'll have to write that up sometime, but that is, um, I take it, I receive it. <laughs> and I and I agree with it, and I found myself saying it based on the, the scripture about, you know, binding and loosing, or what you bind on earth. And, and some years ago, I found myself talking to the devil about some other issues, and finding myself saying, I'm issuing a spiritual restraining order against you. And yeah, right. Amen. <laughs> I, I agree, and I'm looking forward to hearing the teaching on it, but I, I can tell you it works. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> All right. I want to say thank you, Joseph, for your comment as well as for his Christine. I may excuse myself, but I just want to say to all of you, thank you for your prayers, your love, and, uh, you know, Amen. Well, I still got to work on some of my little reports. I'm like, okay, I got to. Uh, what did uh, I think it was Joseph saying? Well, I just gotta uh, file that away. You know, I know God has delivered me, but then when I see that person, I feel this little tinge on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a report, and yep. you know, you have to get rid of it. You know, and that, look, may I say this, and then I'll step away. But you know, talking about having faith in Jesus, even to forgive. 
you're going to have to have confidence in Christ. Mm -hmm. Because if you remember, Jesus was telling the disciples, hey, you got to forgive seven times 70. And they freaked out. <laughs> and what did they respond to him? They, they didn't say, well, okay, I got that. Because Jesus was saying, no, if you meet 20 people in one day, you're going to have to forgive each person 70 times 70 or seven times 70. That's like that. And it, it, there's not like rollover minutes where the next day, you know, you don't feel you pull that. <laughs> and their response was, God, Lord, increase our faith. Did you see that? When he was telling them to forgive and that all of this, they said, you're going to have to help us to have confidence in what you're saying. Mm. You see that? Mm. So even when mm. you're trying to forgive, oh, God, just say, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and and it's God. much easier. <laughs> anyway, that's what yes. I wanted to say. Yes. Okay. I also want to say that one day I was, I caught myself thinking, what is going on today? This situation is bad. I don't like this at all. And I picked up my Bible and I said, Lord, what is wrong today? What is going on? And this is exactly where I opened the Bible to. Proverbs 6, 2. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. And I'm like, oh, geez, sorry, Lord. I, I got it now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Tim, don't you just hate it when God pulls rank on you like that? Oh, especially when I just grab my Bible and exactly where I opened it up to, that is exactly what he wants to say. Yep. Love you all. Love okay. you. Too. Love you, Pastor. We love you, too. You. It was an awesome message. You did great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Christine, right. I just want—I just wanted to add one more thing about that. Uh, you know, right. the, the situation where I was talking to my my direct report, and we were going through stuff, and I wasn't bitter in that sense where I was the one spewing bitterness, <laughs> but I was—I was. There's a level. There's a new maturity in me where where I try not to uh, enjoy too much <laughs> in you know when you know when you leave someplace and it falls apart and you didn't get, you didn't get to leave the way you wanted to leave and it's falling apart. There's that thing inside of you. You're like, yeah, that's right. That's what you get. See, I told you, <laughs> but then, but right. then like, but then there's this pride thing. Like you can't God, you know, he, he, he wants justice. And he, he, I, I asked him, I said, I, you give me justice. That's all I want. And it's just been just hammering down and everything's just falling apart over there. So, <laughs> part of the mature part of me is like, okay, there's still people there that I care about, you know, and yeah. and I I'm like, you know, I I feel like I don't want to I don't want to like enjoy it so much. <laughs> it's hard. It's it's a pride yeah. thing, I guess. So it's just interesting. So yeah, yeah, it's so. Yeah. Funny. I had an opportunity to walk out this week something really really difficult with my oldest daughter, and it was like. Okay, God, this is just not in me right now to forgive this girl. So I'm just going to set it on a shelf and I'm just going to trust you for peace and for joy and just deal with this situation in the way I need to. And it was like, I had so much peace and so much joy. It was like, before I knew it, it was like, okay, I guess this just doesn't really matter that much. Mm -hmm. It was just like, you know, that was really a horrendous thing that you know, sometimes you just want to take those grown 40 year old children and spank their backsides. And <laughs> so they're stuck with dealing with God. Hey, 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 help me here. But yeah, you just gave me total peace and joy about it. So, anyway, anybody else like to share today? Miss Maria, you did an awesome job with communion. And I know you always have a good word. Would you like to say something today? Well, I don't know, is that that it's so much that I could just relate with. Like, it got to the point, uh, I'm the one that I've been um, I'm doing the YouTube and I'm trying to make the comments and put the, the scriptures and she comes with so much, you know, all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, 
<laughs> just try to put everything there and not miss anything. I'm also a very detailed person. And what she was talking about, like, it's, it's just about Jesus. Jesus is the report. Jesus is the, the report of God about us made flesh. And if we focus on him and we concentrate on him and, and believe in him and, and, and relate with him and, and interact with him, he is the miracle. And, and that's what I'm, I'm getting out of this right now, like kind of refocused on, you know, forget about that. I was even um, mentioning and commenting this morning, you know, this is, is getting much better. Thanks God. Glory to God. I have relief. The problem is that things don't stop to pop up. <laughs> That's the only problem. <laughs> but yeah. then if I just focus on Jesus, which is the miracle, which is my home, which is my beginning, my present, my end, my everything, my all, then everything is going to fall into place yeah. see so so that's that's what i'm that's what i'm getting in my heart right now at this moment it is it's jesus everything the good report that all the promises everything that we need is him we have him we focus on him everything else is just gonna fall on its own weight right thank you i remember she asked and I heard you say that, and I thought, that's it. He's the miracle. I mean, the miracle birth. It's everything. It's the whole reason for him coming is the miracle of love. Yes. I mean, you all said such wonderful things, but I had to come back when I heard you saying that. And that's really where it is, you know, because I have been in places, and maybe you too, where I've made confessions, I've done everything, and it just seems like it's going up against the wall. I mean, I, it just like my prayers can barely get past my my forehead. You know, it's just like come out of my mouth and it rises right above my eyebrows and then it flops. It just that's how it feels. And then I say, but Jesus, and I have walked through my home just saying, Jesus, you're all in all. Jesus, you're all and all. Jesus, that's all I could say is Jesus, you're all in all. Jesus, and I have to tell you. Whew, Amen. Amen. Pastor. Yes. I just wanted to tell you that every single time you asked that question, I wanted to answer you and I wanted to say, he is my miracle. Yes. <laughs> but I but I held my tongue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're, you're putting me in a in a spot where I want to say something, but I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Tim. Praise Thank God. You so Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I know that she asked the question and actually told us all to write down what we believe the report was. So, is anybody bold to say what they wrote down? Did you actually write it down? <laughs> <laughs> Were you naughty? You didn't write it down. That is <laughs> actually what I wrote down, is he is the miracle. Amen. Well, Javier, you have yours written down. What did you put? Unmute you yourself. Unmute yourself. I repeat it uh, many times because I think I like to take notes. It's a way I, I remember things later. Uh, I repeated many times that he is a miracle. Um, I think I just put exactly that, that uh, Jesus Christ, the, the fact that Jesus is Christ is the miracle. Yes. All right. Well, anyone else? Did you, any of you write down when she asked you what it what? Is the report to you? What do you believe the report is? No people with pen and papers today. Uh oh. I just wrote. I just wrote. Jesus is Lord is the report, and <laughs> uh, and then I wrote that all fruit, that all miracles are the fruit of this report. That's what I wrote. Amen. Amen. Okay. He is the miracle, you know. And if we're not careful, we can get into uh, trying to achieve something um, 
with our confession as a an act of works and we don't cut it that way but uh, i have to say that i appreciate tim and bob's report and i saw the holy ghost there in tim's report showing that uh, he said he would show us of things to come and in bob's report that he would make us bold uh, i remember there was uh, one instance in the scriptures where when they the Holy Ghost came upon them in the Old Testament. We know he indwells us now, but they became as different people. They became bold. They became strong. And um, I just thank God for this message today because it, it helps us look at that Jesus is the miracle. And I take pictures of the scriptures in the chat. So I felt like I was taking pictures of a model. <laughs> He's he's the model, and I'm taking pictures of his word. So, amen. This has been so good. Amen. Thank you. Yes, I spent 15 years in uh, Faith City with Pastor Kathy Bransick, and you will not come to a service without your tablet and your pencil. <laughs> it's like she will teach you to be a note taker. So I have been a note taker all of my life, and it's a really good thing to have and to do, and it just write things down. So when, you know, later you're thinking, what was that she said? Oh, yeah, it's right here on my notebook. <laughs> so immense. Anyone else out there, bold and brave, let's say something glorifying to God today. What you got? What you got? But what I got is I'm I'm hoping somebody else did take notes because the last few weeks I've, I have occasionally jotted down for the sake of the highlight reel, we, we like to put little short highlight clips on on the YouTube channel. And so I'll jot down, oh, at uh, 10 minutes in, pastor said this and go back and get it later. I, I have no such notes for today. The only thing I know to do is maybe I could chop up the whole thing into two minute segments and call them all highlights. <laughs> I have you. I, I have your back. Good, send it I to got me. You yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, hello, Mr. Chris. I see you unmuted. What you got? Uh, well, um, Jesus is the answer. And what what I love about God is um, well, Jesus is our cheat sheet. God presents us with um options, choices, and he says, I I I, I lay before you death and life, choose life. And he tells you the answer. He yeah. always tells you the answer. So he's our he's our cheat sheet. We can cheat our way out. You know, we we got a way yeah. out of all these situations. You know, and we don't have to we don't have to try. We just have to believe, right? But the only the the um the only thing that he asks us to do is to labor to enter into his rest. Amen. That's labor. That's the only labor that he asks us to do is to enter into his rest. It's already finished. It's already done. He's given us the answer. Here's your cheat sheet. And if you believe it, miracles will happen. So, um, yes, Jesus is the miracle. Jesus is the answer. And what a wonderful message that was today. And just one thing about that, Chris, is this is an open book test. Yeah. Yeah, it's an open book <laughs> test. Yeah. You, know? you can't. <laughs> You know, and that's what that that's what makes it makes you it so have hard to have to, the book guess, open to get it right. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and that, that's what that's in a way that's what makes it so hard to to believe too, right? It's like so, okay, you that's the answer that and <laughs> that's it, and it's there, and I all I need to do is believe it. And he's just he's too good. Sometimes it, the gospel is just too good to be true. Yeah. You know, but it is it is the truth. And um, yes. one of my favorite scriptures is Romans 9, 1, um, where, where it really came alive to me. Where the Apostle Paul says, I speak the truth in Christ. I lie not. And sometimes your symptoms, right? Your body is lying to you. And all you have to do, and then you feel like when you're making these confessions you're, that you're lying, right? But the truth is in Christ. I speak the truth in Christ. So like before I make my confession, I speak the truth in Christ. I lie not. My body's telling me one thing, but the Bible tells me this, yeah. right? Yeah. So that, that's I speak the truth in Christ. I lie not. Amen. Yes. Anyway. Whenever I'm believing for healing, that's the first thing I do is bind lying spirits and lying symptoms because they're a lie. 
they have no right in my body. Therefore, it's a lie. So, yeah, that's a powerful thing to have a revelation of that. It's a lying symptom and you have authority over it. So. All right. Yes. <laughs> I actually do have a couple of more uh, big things, but I think it's going to be more of a gl- give him the glory. Because okay. there there's some really good things going on and they're adding up. Okay. <laughs> well, now you got up. us on edge, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta go, come back next week. Yep. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'll send it to you, Bob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get it recorded. <laughs> Keep you on your toes. Yeah. <laughs> I have a praise report of something is um for the woman's ministry this month, I had Sharon and Terry um, talk about what they would leave in a legacy letter to their children and their family and their friends and their neighbors. And it was based off of Joshua where God asked him to have one man of each of the tribes take a stone out of the middle of the Jordan River and set it as a memorial for the children to come in the next generations that when they ask, what's that stone for that you could tell them God did this. He dried up the Jordan river. So based on that, and it was like, okay, I'm asking these ladies to do this. What would I do God? If I had to set a stone before my children, you know, if I knew I was leaving in the morning, Jesus come to get me, what am I going to send set in front of my children? So I said, okay, Lord, well, One's not speaking to me, and the other one I haven't heard from since Christmas. But um, she called me and ended up my youngest talking for two and a half hours. And during that time, I said, it came up in conversation, something about, you know, I said, the only thing I care about, Cassie, is that you make heaven. And she said, Okay, so I got to explain to her what that meant, because she has this sense of, if I'm a good person, I'm going to get to heaven. So I set that down as a solid stone and made that clear. No, you cannot go to heaven based on your goodness or what kind of person you are. Jesus is the only door, the only way you cannot enter into heaven except you accept him. So she changed the subject, went on to other things, but the stone was set. <laughs> it's like God brought that conversation. She was in a good mood, amicable, and I got to share that with her. So it was a, a good, good testimony for God to do something that I was not expecting. So <laughs> bring on the good reports. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Are we going to wrap her up early today? We have some people, no video showing, so I don't want to bump you. I just want to remind everybody that whether you watch this right away, whether you watch this 10 years down the road, the anointing is always here. If you're looking for healing, the word goes forth and it never comes back void. It works no matter when it is, no matter what time, no matter where you see it. If you see it, the anointing is there. Believe for what you need. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I believe that scripture that I put forth earlier about consider it all joy when you're going through tests and trials because you want to become more mature in uh, perseverance and endurance. And, you know, if somebody would like to close us out in prayer and just consider that and pray for that for some people, because I know there are some out there that are going through some real trials and real tests. And sometimes it's difficult to have joy and consider it joyful. So we got a volunteer. I got to pluck you out of there. (laughs) All right, Joseph, go ahead and pray for us, will you? Father God, we come to you today with a heart of thanksgiving. Thank you for this beautiful day, for this beautiful service that we've had, for the anointing, and for your timeless. Thank you for just being you. You are the miracle. And as we focus on you, we live. And 
like the story in in numbers where there was that the serpents that were biting the people and the bronze serpent uh they made a bronze serpent so that you could look at it we look at you we live at, we may be bit by the world bit by all these poisons around us but as we look at you we live and you are the miracle hallelujah um just please continue to be with us help us to be the best that you we can be in everything that we do everything that we try everything that we say <laughs> and help us to have a be- help us to have the report help us our report match your report um in Jesus mighty name hallelujah amen amen amen, amen. amen. thank All you right. everybody we have an early day out. Go enjoy some sunshine. <laughs> Be yeah, blessed, everybody. Blessed. Bye. Bye. Bye.